Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and, of course, some of the country's biggest stars. And it's always nice to talk to a legend, a man who's done everything. He's got a brand new album out. He was in the West End in the Roy Orbison story. And, of course, he's worked with everybody from Cliff Richard and now me. Peter Howarth, how are you? I'm very, very well, Alex. How are you? I'm delicious, and it's nice talking to you because you're one of those people who can deliver. Seems to me today, with the right processing, anybody can have an album out. Um, yes, they can. I think if you get moderately, anybody can reasonably hold a kind of tune. You can stick somebody in front of a microphone, and with all the knobs and dials, you can certainly get something out of somebody, I would imagine, and a good producer could knock something together in a listenable form. Yeah, most people could actually record uh, an album if they so wish. There's certainly no auto-tune on your new album, is there? No, uh, we tend not to use it because it affects the tone of the voice. And I'm not saying I don't sing that tune. Um, I am uh, human. Uh, and sometimes um, you'll you find something slightly out. You think, well, that's nice, got a nice character suit, so you leave it in. But I'm pretty OCD with that, so there's not that really going on. I'll just sing it again uh, and get it in tune. But hopefully, most of the uh, songs are done not in one take, um, I've only seen Cliff do that, actually. Cliff did a vocal in one take. And uh, although usually I'll take one as my major uh, take, I'll, I'll sing it three or four times, and I'll take one of the major one, and if there's one slight note slightly wrong, I'll take a line, and I'll sing it about four times, and I'll, I'll just move that line to where the, the dodgy one is. That seems to be the, the, that's the way I seem to like recording vocals. How oh, marvellous. I mean, when I listen to your voice, there's there's a purity about it. There's a mellifluous tone that I can sort of hear why you got the gig as Roy Orbison. Th- those notes aren't easy at the top, are they? No, um, they're not easy at the top. Um, well, I think they're easier um, if you're one younger and you've got a nice, naturally high voice, then it's, it's like singing your normal register. Um, my normal register goes up, to, normally I would say, to about a B flat. Uh, B's getting a little hard these days. In my younger days, I used to get to C's and, and the occasional D when I was doing sort of a lot of rock singing. But as I've got older, my voice has got slightly different and slightly come down in a, in a, in a tone or two naturally uh, with a little bit more tone which I think that's what happens to most people as they get older their voice kind of matures a little bit um, so yeah I'm, I'm Orbison was, was um, wasn't easy it wasn't easy especially doing eight shows a week I was going to ask about that is it a bit like being in a boxing match where you're just punched left right and centre through those eight shows those two show matinee days can't have been easy you pace yourself uh, as much as you can although I always believe that if you're doing a Tuesday night show and we start on Tuesdays and then we have Monday off when you do the Tuesday you give the same show as you do on a Saturday night for me the people that are coming through the door are paid just the same money as a Saturday night audience a lot of you know, some people they'd save themselves for the Saturday night crowd but for me I, I sang it as, as, uh, and gave as which I could every time I did it um, but when it got to the weekend the um, we did two on a I think it was two on a Friday two on a Saturday and one on a Sunday so mm-hmm. by Monday I, I couldn't really speak by Monday Monday morning it was it was tough I'm not, I'm not saying it wasn't tough it was but you know that, that it was it, it does you a lot of good developing that stamina that um, it's like getting into training for something and, and you well you know you've got to do something you just get on and do it you know you don't really think about it you just do it how terrifying is it waking up in the morning and going, <coughs> is it still there? Is there a moment where you think, am I up to this? No, I'll tell you what, you just hit a, a name, a uh, nail right on the head, there, actually, that, um, and again, I've got used to this as well, uh, because what would happen is that you would do uh, a show and then I'd wake up in the middle of the night, um, you know, and, and, and when I'm going to the bathroom, I'd go, <coughs> ooh, and I'd try to sink a little bit, and the stupid thing you could possibly do, uh, and and then the voice wouldn't be there. You've got to allow your voice to recover, really. And the only way, what you should do is not even bother trying to sing until the following night around about six o'clock. But, but it's, it's so easy to start trying to sing and panic and think, well, I'm not going to be able to get that note, I'm not going to be able to get that note. Just leave it until the night time, and it usually appears. But it's hard not to panic. I mean, anybody who's tried crying at, uh, I don't mean crying literally, but the song crying at karaoke will realise how hard it is. I mean, it's over about 13 octaves, isn't it? <laughs> not I don't know. It's, it's it's pretty high. I think. I think. It's, again, it's a falsetto. And to me, with crying, it's not, it, it is actually. You're right. It is. A, it's a heck of a song to sing because you've got uh, the transition between falsetto, which I think it doesn't matter, to the top D, I think, um, and then comes down into normal register. But then your normal register, I think, you're up to the top A. So yeah, it's not an easy song to sing if you want to give it the full the full beans, as they say. It's it's a great song, an amazing song. 
Um, not good if you've just come out of a relationship, I would imagine, to sing. But it is great. <laughs> Yeah, a bit depressing. Uh, the, 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 drummer, the drummer, I remember the drummer when we did the Roy Orbison story, I think he's, unfortunately his wife left him when we're doing the show. I mean, what a show to be doing when your wife's just left you, you know, you, you have to sometimes look back and see him sort of hunched over the kick, <laughs> literally crying, you know, he's <laughs> kind of, you know, it's over and, and, and all that, you know, it was, it was very tough for him, very tough for him to be hammered with that eight times away when you're going to. Let's talk about this new album because it is extraordinary. You've got three tracks on it. And what I love about it is they're all so different. Um, th- there's clearly a religious overtone. We've got Palm 23, Evermore, which is such a glorious song. Lament, I have to say, is probably one of my favourites. And of course, the classic He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a, a sort of an EP taster for the album to come that's due out in, in January. Um, just, I just recorded the last song, actually, was it about four days ago? Um, I just recorded the last one to be mixed and hopefully we'll get it out by January but there is um, the reason that there's this kind of we, we like to say an inspirational overtone uh, uh, although it is, it is religious I mean Psalm 23 was my mother's favourite uh, prayer and the, and the reason that came out about is that when I was doing a Holly's kick I do like an acoustic section uh, but I sing just a couple of songs on my own with an acoustic guitar which has grown over the last 10 years and I've got a little bit of repertoire of acoustic songs which I'm doing an acoustic little tour and blah 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 but the, the point being is that um, a lady called Pam Rhodes was, was watching me do this uh, she went to see a, a concert we were doing with the Hollies and I spoke to her afterwards and she said to me I really love what you do with the acoustic guitar have you got anything um, inspirational or, or, or religious that you, would you like to do um, songs of praise and I said I'd love to do songs of praise I really would but I haven't got anything particularly that um, direct religious uh, and she said well could you get something together I said well give me give me a week and I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do and I had written Psalm 23 uh, with um, some of my writing parts for a girl singer out two years previously it was more like a, a classical version of it I thought I could do a, an acoustic version of this so what I did I got the guitar out did an acoustic version of it, um, recorded it and sent it to uh, Pam, who presented it to Songs of Praise, and they said, this is lovely and we'll, we'll, we'll have him on. So um, I went on and did uh, Psalm 23, and they also asked me back, I think it was a few months ago, and I did the old Rugged Cross for them. So the album was really a Pam's idea. Pam did say to me, why don't you do an album of ins- inspirational stuff because with the guitar I think it'd be lovely you know uh, she said I think people would really like it she said why don't you there's a great poem by Elizabeth Bray called uh, you know do not stand at my grave and weep I am not there I do not sleep and I knew that because I that my dad's funeral I said yeah I know that poem she said well, why don't you put it to music and, and do Psalm 23 and do a few songs of, of an inspirational nature not all about religion but just general inspiration people when they get married you know somebody's lost somebody or somebody's just been born or uh, something like that something that means something to somebody so I thought that's a great idea and um, from, from that was about a year ago a year and a bit ago we've been working very hard to get an album together and of course he and Heavy falls into that category it's an inspirational song it means so much to some different people uh, and I actually sung that acoustically for a um, a very good friend of mine um, whose his mother had passed away and he asked me to sing it at the funeral he didn't want me to use a backing track or up yeah, he wanted me to do it on a guitar so I did the version of it and that's the version I've recorded on the album um, and, that, and that seemed perfect for me to do that song being in the Hollies and, and doing my own little project it was a lovely little bridge um, uh, of the two and it was just time to be an inspirational song as well which worked perfectly and it's so nice to hear someone who can actually sing. I mean, the way that you hit those notes during He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, is as good as you were hitting 20, 30 years ago. And that must be a thrill because there must be a fear that as you get older, the voice will yeah. sort of decrease and, and you will be sort of losing notes by the week. <laughs> there is, there is. I think, um, I think every singer has that, that, must have that fear um, that you are going to, one day you're not going to get up and you're not going to be able to, to bellow it out like you used to do. And just, Funny enough, just doing. I've just done four concerts in Scotland with the Hollies, and I had a tiny bit of a cold, um, and and it makes me realise when you do get anything wrong with your equipment, as it were, it makes it really hard work. And every note was you have to get this huge amount of air to bellow it out. And, um, it, it is it is a bit of a worry that you. you but all I can do is. Is, is do what I do be grateful for it I try and keep myself as fit as possible and do it for as long as I possibly can 
that's all you can you can't you can't worry about things that are not going to might not happen you know and again I suppose you could get into a negative sort of psychosis where you make yourself ill by worrying about if you're going to get ill well that's well, that's, the, that's the thing with that we, we're talking about people get up in the middle of the night um, I call it singer's panic you know and I used to get that a lot when I was younger but now I recognise it I won't do it now I won't let myself panic I'll just um, if I get up and I've had a hard night singing the night before I just won't bother even trying to sing until I go and do the sound check and warm my voice up then I know if I'm going to do it and usually if you just leave it alone it'll, the, the voice is an incredibly tough robust piece of equipment that stands I can put testament to an awful lot of uh, abuse in, in the shouting department you know because uh, I call it shouting really it's singing's a bit too sorry for it but it's just shouting at people and then that's basically what I've been doing and, and it's, it is an incredibly tough piece of equipment enough about uh, hammering your equipment we better move on and give you a plug hadn't we for your tour dates okay. 2014 is the year that you're out on the road again 8th of March you're in Epsom uh, the 9th you're going to be in Cheltenham uh, the 15th you're at Enfield then you go to uh, London at the St James Theatre you're in uh, Thandudno uh, you're going to Boreham Wood you're going to Basingstoke you're going to Croydon uh, and you're going to Banbury as well you can find out more information at peterhoweth.com your website yeah. before we go I must just talk to you about two things one the legends you work with and secondly of course the Hollies we're going to get to that last um, w- when you're working with somebody like Cliff Richard I've been lucky enough to interview Cliff many times and then once I saw him in an arena with about 30,000 people and I thought y- you can't imagine what it's like to be him and his head because on the one hand he's having to talk to idiots like me and on the other hand he's got these adoring fans did you ever sort of get into the mind of what it's like to be somebody as omnipresent as Cliff because he is everywhere he's still as current today really as he was then and he is a legend isn't he he is but first of all I don't think you're an idiot I said that's that's (laughs) thank you (laughs) you're not Um, uh, and and Cliff uh, doesn't I don't think he ever treats anybody as such Um, I I think he's he's, he's been an incredible um, ambassador to the business really over the last uh, you know 50 years he's been he's been chugging on and he's he's had an amazing career Um, it, it, it's, he's still going he's, st- he's still singing as, as much as he can I think he might be obviously slowing down now because I first started working with Cliff in 1986 I think it was 86, 87 he was touring nine months of the year nine months of the year he'd tour constantly but now I don't think I think he'd be lucky for nine weeks now and I don't blame him in a way I mean he's he's put the work in over 50 years oh, no I mean I think it, yeah, I think he just wants to do as much as he feels comfortable with um, he still produces an album I think he's just done a new album and he goes out and does as much as he wants to and then he can enjoy the fruits of his labours you know because he, he did work incredibly hard but I'm saying incredibly hard for somebody in our business I don't mean I, I, I hate to say that when anybody in our business say oh they're working hard you know doing what you love doing singing no matter how many gigs you do in a week is not hard work it's fun you know and it always has been fun so when I use the term hard work I mean for somebody in our business he, mm. he had a good work ethic you know he did always put the time and he, he was very conscientious of what he does he, he, he's very um, like I say he's one of the only person that people I've seen do a, a vocal and he can do a um like a, a guide vocal for us guys to, to put some backing singing on he sang it through perfectly absolutely perfectly and it was the one that was used on the track do you still and, pinch yourself when you're in his company or people of his ilk the fact that they regard you as a fellow professional and you're one of them is that is that amazing um, I, I never get um, over the fact that I'm still here in the business and, and when I am with the guy was you know when I was 15, well, not probably a bit earlier, 12, 13, I used to listen to a lot of Cliff stuff. I was into a couple of albums that I was really into and really liked. Uh, and then before I worked with him, I was just playing guitar in bands and stuff. And then about, literally, it was about, what, 10 years later, nine years later, you know, 10 years later, I was working with him. So that, that was, I remember going to the rehearsal room the first day and going, blind is Cliff Richard, you know, I'm not used to from Cliff Richard. And you know, I'm in, in the match the summer holiday films that I used to watch when I was a kid and he's right in front of you and he's going, hi Pete, how are you? You know, it's like, just bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre. And I, I did get a bit like that, but I, I was, obviously it's not, I, I'm not, I've got used to it. I, I'm, I still get starstruck when I meet people that have, uh, you know, been my heroes and I just happen to be in a room or get introduced to them. I still got blimey, it's blah, blah, blah. It's always different you see somebody on TV and then you're in the flesh in the same room and it's always a bit odd, you know. Um, Funny old business, it, 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 isn't it? Kind of, 
it is a funny old business because you know they're only normal people at the end of the day you know they do all the same things that we do you know they're still human uh, but it's when somebody's been kind of more life on the screen or you've been watching them on the screen you tend to place them somewhere like in a star like people do when people see people on TV whether it be a, a reality show or whatever it is to see somebody enough on TV all of a sudden they become a TV star and it, it, it's when you actually meet them it's, it's a bit odd it is a bit odd isn't it really yeah. it is. well I mean and you're being very humble making out you're not one of them but anybody who's heard you sing and certainly I saw you in the West End in that Roy Orbison role absolutely stunning that's the only way I can phrase it wow. incredible wow when did you see it Alex when, when did you when did you come down to see it well I, I started reviewing theatre about 15 20 years ago so I think it was probably I don't know 10 years ago something like that and uh, you were just one of many but uh, I think I said at the time it's very rare that anybody in the West End captures your imagination and that's why I think people like Michael Ball and even yourself are so rare there aren't that many personalities and that's what you've got in your voice a great depth to it congratulations on that well thank you very much it's very very sweet of you and I'm, I really appreciate that some of obviously listen to an awful lot probably a lot more than I have because <laughs> that's something I don't really do is I, I don't listen to enough my, my family trying to keep me up to breath and I, my daughter and my son now are the, uh, keep me in touch with a lot of the music that's going on now because a lot of the time it kind of washes over me and I don't listen to it I don't listen to enough new stuff but um, my children I think that's what they do isn't it they sort of keep you informed of what's going I don't think you're missing a great deal, Peter, to be perfectly honest with you. Stick with what you know, that's what I say. Let's give another plug for this album, then. OK. Let's do it. Peter Howarth's new CD is going to be out next year, but there is an EP available with He Ain't Ever Is My Brother, which is just gorgeous, Lament, and, of course, Psalm 23, which is just beautiful. There's also a couple of bonus tracks on there, which I really enjoyed. To hear you unplugged again is so nice, and, and just a beautiful tone. Really, congratulations on that. Such a such a Thank gift, Peter. All, all those songs, I think, are, I think they're available on iTunes and... and and, and stuff for download now which is great uh, but the, the, the unplugged versions are the ones that are uh, just the like, little bonus tracks of, uh, of the ones that I actually did on Songs of Praise I did it with just acoustic guitar so for people that like a more stripped down version that's why I put them on there as I think my wife enjoys the stripped down that's, that's terrible isn't it that's terrible. I beg your pardon like stripped down <laughs> terrible isn't it I should not phrase that yeah. uh, my, my wife enjoys the, the version without any strings and quiet on it uh, enough about your private yeah. life just very finally before we go the whole is you're back on the road with those doing the business yeah, all yeah, great yeah, tunes we're laughing all around the UK must be a party that show it's Arthur, we, we have uh, well one of the stipulations when I joined uh, when Tony bummed up to come down for just an audition really I mean I did go down to the guys and I had a little audition but when I, before I went down before I even start this venture I was getting a bit long in the tooth to go out with a band and, and not enjoy it I said I, my stipulation is that there's no like divas in there or there's nobody who's you know odd I don't want any oddness um, <laughs> I think you're in the wrong business for that Peter <laughs> no well the, the thing is, is that when I did get to meet the guys uh, from the moment we started working together we've had it is, I actually have to watch it actually during the day because I laugh so much when we're on the van and we're, we're talking about especially with the keyboard player and we and all of us when we get together I laugh so much I have to watch my voice because I've actually laughed so hard I've actually nearly lost my voice you know because oh. I've been screaming and laughing so much when you walk into a situation like that you as a lead singer although you want to stamp your authority on it you've got to do it in a subtle way and I've just gently just gently uh, it slowly over the last 10 years and it's become more a part of me and it, it, it fits really well now and uh, we've, we've brought the band in a couple of parts and although it had a great history it does have great history for the Hollies we try to keep that feeling for you know, the band still together and still creating music and still hopefully entertaining and giving people a good value for money you know Peter, congratulations on everything. The new album will be out next year. You're back on the road. You can find out more at peterhoweth.com. Great to talk to you, Pete. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, and uh, hopefully uh, speak soon.